quick recap on particle accelerators and the masses that are produced after two protons or two particles in general are collided together with a certain kinetic energy. So first of all, <clears throat> the particle accelerator has multiple rings. Each ring is used to accelerate the particles to a certain velocity, whereby it's injected into the next ring, and that's repeated until they get to the largest ring, and then the collisions take place there. So during the collisions, the kinetic energy of the particles can be converted to new mass. The higher the kinetic energy, the larger the mass that's created, but also the greater variety of particles. Uh, we study those particles in physics, as well as the forces that um, dictate how they interact with each other. Okay, so basically what we have here now, what we'll do for the next few uh, slides, is we'll take a look at two protons colliding with each other with a certain kinetic energy, that's on the left. Then after the collision, the two protons pop out, and that kinetic energy is converted to new particles. Very often you're given information with respect to the minimum kinetic energy required to make two new or to make new particles, in which case all of that kinetic energy will be converted to particles and nothing else. So minimum kinetic energy beforehand to create particles means the particles are created afterwards, but none of the particles will have any kinetic energy. If the minimum kinetic energy is exceeded, what will end up happening is the particles will be created and any of the leftover or excess energy will remain in the form of kinetic energy for either the two protons afterwards or the new particles created afterwards. Bit of a mouthful there. So the kinetic energy basically creates new mass and any mass that's left over goes to the kinetic energy of the newly created particles and the two protons after the collision. So, okay, minimum kinetic energy industry stating what we came across before. So first question, came up in 2009, we have two beams of protons accelerated to high energies in a circular accelerator. They collide producing new particles. Each beam has a kinetic energy of two giga electron volts. What's the maximum net mass of the new particles created per collision? So if each beam has two giga electron volts, there's four gig um, available. Convert that to joules first of all. And then that energy is converted to mass. So you'll use E equals MC squared with four giga electron volts in joules um, on the left hand side and then we divide by the speed of light squared. So if we look at part two, the second line is E equals mc squared, the third line it's rearranged and then to get the mass we multiply the four giga electron volts by the charge on the electron, that's four by ten to the nine multiplied by 1.6 by ten to the minus 19 divided by c squared to get the mass of the new particles created. And that could be any number of particles. It might be one particle. It might be multiple particles. We don't have enough information to make a, determin a determination of that yet. Second example, 2011. <clears throat> so in this case, two protons are collided uh, off each other. Two protons and two charged pi mesons are produced in the collision. So write an equation to represent this and show the kinetic energy of each incident proton must be at least that for a collision to occur. All right, so the, the equation will be P plus P plus energy goes to P plus P plus pi plus pi um, afterwards. Now the pi mesons will either both have to be neutrally charged or one will have to be positive and one will have to be negative to conserve charge. Show the kinetic energy of each incident proton must be that for the collision to occur. So we know that the kinetic energy of the protons um, <coughs> must create the two pi mesons. So you're going to have to get the mass of the two pi mesons from the log tables, then use E equals mc squared, where the mass will be the mass of both particles, both pi mesons added together, get the E value from that and then convert that mass, or convert that energy even, to electron volts and then to mega electron volts. So there we go. Uh, you can see in part one there's a gap there that's got a, a plus next to it. That should be a pi plus and then we've got a pi minus with a minus sign that's really small. Second step, the mass of the pi meson from the log tables. It says it's 273 times the mass of the electron in the uh, tables. So you need to multiply 273 by the mass of the electron from the tables. Fill that in. You get a, an energy then in joules of around 45 by 10 to the minus 12 joules. Convert that to electron volts. Gives you 280 mega electron volts. 
that's between both protons and dividing that by 2 will give you 140 for each proton. Final example. We have two protons, each with a kinetic energy of 1 giga electron volt. So that means a total kinetic energy of 2 giga electron volts going into it. Convert that to joules. Once we have that in joules, uh, it's likely that we're going to have to convert that to a mass value using E equals mc squared. All right, what are we told then? After the collision, two protons and three pions are emitted. We're asked for what is the net charge of the three pions. That has to be zero to conserve charge. Then let's calculate the combined energy of the particles, the combined kinetic energy of the particles after the collision, and the maximum number of pions that could have been created. Okay, so we're given the energy, the kinetic energy. If we convert that to mass, um, we'll get a certain value. But actually, I'm more interested in going the other way. So if you went to the pion mass in the log tables, got the mass of the three pions uh, in total, converted that to energy, and then the difference in energy would be the amount of kinetic energy available for the pions. All right, and that's what they do there. So in number two, E is equal to mc squared. They have the energy of one pion is 1.3935 by 10 to the 8 electron volts. So for three pions, multiply that by three. Now, what that means then is that's the amount of energy needed to create the pions. But sure, we already have two giga electron volts put into the system, meaning that there's a whole 1.6 roughly by 10 to the 9 electron volts left over. That will be supplied then to the pions in the form of kinetic energy. Now, number three, calculate the minimum number of pions that could have been created. Well, we know to create one pion, <coughs> we need 1.3935 by 10 to the 8 electron volts. Uh, we know that there's two giga electron volts available, and if we divide the small one into the big one, you'll end up with a value of 14. They do it slightly different there in the, in the Merkel scheme, but you should be able to do it nonetheless.